though, for our next presentation, Paul already presented with me on the RPX and the harmonics. Um, and this presentation is basically a comparison between John Bedini's SG technology and uh, the direction that Mike Clark went with the uh, RPG, reactive power generator, which is the air core, higher voltage, battery swapping and all this. He's going to go into the comparison of why that makes a difference, what you should maybe be doing. And um, come on up. Welcome, Paul. Well, first, here's my, let me go into my tragedy. We'll start with brain dead and stupid first, right? 20 plus years later, countless school go motors built and spun, and near as I can tell, the experimenting public seems to be as clueless as ever about the functioning theory behind pulse motors and their role as one element in a functioning OU system. I find this somewhat tragic, because you can't get time back. 20 years is a long time. So John and Peter and Aaron, I mean, they published some of the best books. It was all in there for you to understand this. But hell, the last book they published didn't even get one review, not even out of the form. You know, that's tragic. You know, and here's the thing about thinking. I was sitting in a meeting one day when I was running flyback and a whole conference table full of PhDs, engineers, suits of every kind, bankers. And I'm up there explaining how our, the theory about how our stuff works. And I'm looking around the room and they're all rubbing their heads like, yeah. I'm going, damn, I'm hurting them. <laughs> and that's when I had this profound realization that for most people, thinking hurts. And so, and, the, and since I've had that realization, I found that's pretty much endemic with most Americans. That's why they don't do it, right? I know it hurts, but that's no excuse for not doing it, right? I attribute this more to lazy than stupid, because people end up being tricked into thinking that they're not smart. Everybody's a genius. I don't care who you are. Even if you're retarded, you, there's some place where you're a genius. You can make freaking anything. So pulse motors are very inefficient. Iron cores are more electrically efficient than air core coils, but the SGM that uses welding rods for core material has large I square R losses. Rule of thumb for pulse motors. Using iron core coils, you're about 40% efficient. And you can take any iron core pulse meter and you're gonna, if you just test it, input power to shaft out the power, that's about what you'll get. Air core coils are even less, they're about 20% electrical efficient. So it's just, I don't care how brainy you are, you must, a scientist of consciousness is here. A regular scientist is over here, his brain hurts. And it really hurts when he tries to understand that he needs to be this, too. So I, walk, I have a foot in both worlds. I'm a scientist of consciousness, and I'm a self-taught scientist of brain. And I work both. And so your intellect and your intuition, they're each other's handmaiden. Anybody who just does one or the other is dysfunctional. You must be both. Your mind is your own. Changing your belief system, taking in, trying to understand, think it's extremely hard for physically focused beings who are locked into a body thing for people to understand how to think in fourth dimensional terms. I've been struggling with it for decades and I still don't have it figured out. But I have it more figured out than everybody else. <laughs> so I'm going to drop a couple of clues through it with the intention of causing as much mind hurt as possible. <laughs> After that, we'll go back to making hot rod schoolgirl motors. Clue number one, all post motors over unity systems have this in common. For motors using iron core coils or air core coils, magnetic flux is forced to travel through a dielectric medium, always. You will never find a machine that works without flux driven into a dielectric medium, which is the air. Here's the John thing, right? 
So replace the antiquated bipolar transistor with an in-channel power MOSFET of your choice. Diodes used for flyback capturing should be modern silicon carbide diodes. Replace the any two lamp or lamps with the transient voltage suppressor diode. And see these things, oh, damn it, come back here. These things, I cannot tell you how much switching power you can do in a MOSFET these days. And silicon carbide diodes, right? When silicon carbide diodes first came out about 10 years ago, the company that made them sent me the damn spec sheets. And I was blown away, so I'm on the phone with them, right? I want some. They said, well, you're going to have to stand behind the military and DARPA because they bought up all our production for like seven or eight years. Transient voltage suppressor diodes. They were invented. They're super fast Zener diodes designed to beat lightning strikes in speed. So they were designed to put across equipment to protect from lightning. But they are so fast that they do this, what I call the transitional voltage clamp. So when you're switching off your transistor and the diode's turning on, there's this gap. With the silicon carbide diodes, that gap's a lot smaller. But the flyback phenomenon, here's the deal with flyback. The period you're switching, the faster the flyback comes, and 20 years ago, my brother and I were talking about this. There's this funny thing. It says it's like we were standing there. It's like we're affecting time. And we were really expressing John's thing about switching. When you get to that moment where the current's neither going forward or backward, you've confused electrons. You've interrupted electron behavior. And electron behavior is what de determines your perception your sense to time, everything is about electron behavior. So by any terms of physics, with the 100 amp batteries you're using, I can't run that machine more than a minute without the RPM starting to drop, because the voltage is dropping. And literally, a tenth of a volt will show up as 50 RPM loss on the data logger. So, explain to me why my RPM in a 14, 15 hour run on 100 amp batteries that the machine is pulling 1,000 watts out of the batteries hasn't lost one RPM in 13 hours. Scientists, time is a universal invariant. We have cesium and atomic clocks that say so. I said, well, everything that's physical matter is under the three-dimensional rules. So it's only true in the three-dimensional sense. But here, we're messing with time and entropy. John, you know, time batteries, that's what he called it, right? So, this is what they don't want you to know. This is what the mouse army needs to embrace. I want to see the hot rods out there. I want to see the forums. I want to people see people sharing it. I want to see people taking the school motor. I mean, it's all right there. But... You have to pay the dues. You have to understand what you're doing. And otherwise, it doesn't go forward. The ether is like an ocean, a fourth dimensional ocean. And we're standing up here on the beach in three dimensions. And the tide comes in, the wave comes in. And so most machines are just over here in the tidal zone. So the ether weather is the water, ether water's coming and going. And the reason you see these effects, they come and go, is because you're in the tide. The ether, the ether is affected by all the motions of the solar bodies, and that makes the ether weather. And so if you're in that zone, one day it might work, every day is different, which when you're trying to commercialize product is really freaking tough, right? <laughs> I can't tell you. Many an inventor can tell you this. It worked. I brought in the money, people. And then it didn't. <laughs> and the faster you do that, finally you've caught enough time to cancel entropy out. So you're just going past the ether weather to the deep water back to the shore. So that's the analogy of what you're doing with John's stationary current. 
is you're flinging that bucket. Every time it pulses, you're letting go of your bucket. It goes way out past the shoreline, past the tidal zone, hits the deep water, and you just reel like hell to get it back. And the deal is you don't want to lose it all. You want your bucket full when you get it back. So the faster the machine runs and pulses, the faster you're throwing your bucket out there, pretty soon you're flat, you're entropy free, and you bypass the ether weather. That's why these machines, for the first time, they work the same every day, always. They don't vary. And that's the biggest deal in all the research is I love to see cold electricity. I love to see all these incredible effects I've seen, but they gotta be consistent every day. I would like to make a comment that having seen all this done over the years, that um, it's still recommended to look at the basic, uh, the beginner, intermediate, and the advanced um, SG handbooks, the Beyond SG presentation that uh, Peter gave, and then watch all of Mike Clark's uh, presentations on the RPG over the years. Yep. All the answers are already given there, and John has talked about this for years, but nobody really paid attention to it. They just, I don't know why, out of all these people in Energetic Forum and all the experimenters. Definitely look at the SG books, Mike Clark's uh, presentations. Uh, there's maybe two, three, maybe. And Mike will tell you, 10,000 transistors later, even for them, they dogged it out. They taught themselves some electronics. They did the hard work. They paid their dues. And so we've been working together for many years, right? So we just kind of, I do the electronics now, and they do the motor side, and we've got this partnership. And now we have, for at least five years, we've been running the original prototype. Even with two bad coils, it was over Unity. Now we've got the new one built. It's a racehorse compared to it. And we just got it put together and we're testing it now. But, and that's part of Mike's presentation. Basically, the, the system that he's talking about is recycling the, the electricity that's running the motor is re being recycled back and forth in the, ma in the magnets, I mean, in the batteries. And so that's the, um, uh, and because there's very little change of inductance and other things and very, very um, uh, effective switching, the losses there disappear, basically. You get down to no losses <clears throat> or, or, or complete recovery of the battery chemistry per cycle. Uh -huh. So the gain in the system is the mechanical energy that's being generated as the current moves through the motor. And that is the, the new energy that's being generated by it. And it's not the same form as the energy that you're recycling in the batteries. It's, it comes out of the system as a mechanical gain because of the current, you're, you're, you, because of the currents yeah. moving through the system. The mechanical is standard physics. The mechanical it's is the battery physics. Right. Change, so if you right. use that mechanical energy to to turn a new uh, another electric generator, that is electricity that didn't exist in the system before. 